Just like a water jet cutting through tough material, June splits this year into two unequal parts. One is already behind us, filled with games that brought joy, excitement, and some frustrations. The second part lies ahead, almost completely shrouded in mystery. The burning question on everyone's mind is, what comes next? While many upcoming titles and release dates have been revealed, there are still many unanswered questions. That is why, in addition to our selection of the top 12 games for this month, we have also included a list of all gaming shows taking place in June. These shows will undoubtedly provide answers to those burning questions and guide us through the second half of the year and beyond. As always, you can find links to official websites, demos, and other important information in the description below. Any updates regarding delays, cancellations, or release dates can be found in the pinned comment, so be sure to check them out. And now, onto the video. In Killer Frequency, developed by Team 17 Digital, you take on the role of Forrest Nash, a late-night radio host in the 80s. It is a first-person horror adventure that combines elements of survival and puzzle solving. The game's setting involves a series of murders happening to people who call your station. As the main character, players must fulfill their duties at the radio station, while simultaneously providing guidance to callers in life-threatening situations. Players will navigate through a one-square-kilometer area of the nighttime radio station, interacting with various objects like books, records, tapes, and machinery. The game has been marketed with a strong emphasis on the real-time nature of the gameplay, urging players to interact with eccentric characters, explore the surroundings, collect clues, make decisions, solve riddles, and ultimately help each caller survive their dire circumstances. It presents an interesting challenge to guide someone over the phone on how to hotwire a car. One intriguing feature is the ability to create your own soundtrack by choosing music from a crate of records, allowing you to set the underlying mood and tone of this tense situation. Killer Frequency will be available on Steam and Switch as a traditional flat-screen experience and virtual reality platforms on June 1st. Myriad's Renaissance is a turn-based strategy game that combines elements of city building, civilization, and tower defense. The game aims to make you the ruler of a kingdom high up in the sky. The story revolves around a great rupture that breaks the world into thousands of floating islands. As the player, you'll throw massive iron chains from island to island to connect them, gradually creating your own landscape. You'll also send out airships to find new outposts and establish trade routes for transporting resources. The main goal is to construct buildings, gather resources, and establish new island cities. Additionally, you'll need to defend your empire by building towers and engaging with rival noble families. The game features procedurally generated island worlds, ensuring each playthrough is different. It's designed to last three to four hours, offering a small but enjoyable experience with unique ideas. Created by Sleeping 8 Studio, a team of just two people, Myriad's Renaissance will be available on Steam starting June 1st. Despite the limitations of its small development team, the game's graphics, design, and sound reveal an interesting implementation of familiar mechanics, closely resembling a real tabletop game in its visual style. The demo is also available for you to try out, so check the link in the description if you're interested. Street Fighter VI is coming out on June 2nd and brings a diverse lineup of fighters, both familiar and new. Capcom has revealed cool features like online and single-player modes, along with a dynamic commentary system. The game promises a fresh experience compared to its predecessor. It features returning modes like Arcade Mode, while introducing two new ones, Fighting Ground and World Tour. Fighting Ground offers classic gameplay with online matches, training, and more. World Tour provides a single-player story experience with free-roaming 3D gameplay and the opportunity to learn abilities from master fighters worldwide. Street Fighter VI introduces the Battle Hub, a social multiplayer segment where players can challenge each other to fights and minigames. However, Capcom is introducing more than just new game modes with Street Fighter VI. The Drive Gauge is a new battle system mechanic that allows for creativity with five techniques for offense and defense. It includes Drive Impact, Parry, Rush, Reversal, and Overdrive Arts. The game also aims to be more accessible with the modern control type, offering easier inputs for special moves. Lastly, Real-Time Commentary provides live, expert insights and play-by-play -play explanations from real fighting game commentators. Street Fighter VI will be released on Windows PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, and Xbox Series X and S. Originally planned for May release, Amnesia the Bunker has been postponed to June. In this first-person horror game, you assume the role of a French soldier who becomes trapped in a World War I German bunker with an unkillable monster stalking the corridors. Because the creature prefers the darkness, keeping the generator in the bunker running is your best bet for survival. The lights, however, only slow the creature, and you must shoot it to temporarily scare it away. Your objective is to find explosives and a detonator to blow open the bunker entrance and escape, but how you accomplish this is entirely up to you. The game will attempt to make this more difficult by randomizing the locations of certain items. 
Most problems in the bunker appear to have multiple solutions, rewarding players who try new things while staying within the bounds of the established rules. Overall, the bunker resembles a massive escape room and is more stressful than frightening due to the numerous systems that make it difficult to keep track of everything while fending off the unkillable monster. Amnesia the Bunker will be released on June 6th for PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Series X and S. After what felt like an eternity, Diablo 4 has finally arrived, marking one of the biggest game releases in June, along with Final Fantasy 16. Everyone is ready to dive into the world of Sanctuary and explore the game's potential, endgame content, and comprehensive experience, hoping it lives up to its promises. With the goal of creating the ultimate Diablo experience for players, Blizzard has made significant changes and improvements during the development phase. Let's now briefly discuss the most significant ones. Unlike its predecessors, Diablo 4 introduces an open-world concept, granting players the freedom to explore Sanctuary's five regions in any order they choose. Blizzard has focused on enhancing class identities and customization while incorporating elements from both Diablo 2 and 3. At launch, Diablo 4 will provide players with five classes, each offering diverse playstyles through skill trees. This section offers detailed character customization through skills and passives. Players can invest skill points to unlock or upgrade abilities, earn passive points for character enhancements, and create diverse character builds this way. To improve the overall gameplay experience, Blizzard has eliminated the previous hassle of inventory management by ensuring that each lootable item occupies the same amount of space. Players will no longer need to constantly rearrange their inventory for optimal hoarding, reducing interruptions during gameplay. For post-game progression, Diablo 4 introduces the Paragon system. Once players reach level 50, they gain access to the Paragon board, where they can earn tiles with various enhancements and benefits. As the game progresses, players can connect multiple boards and unlock paths to new magical, rare, and legendary tiles. This complex system offers a customizable and evolving metagame regularly updated by Blizzard. In terms of endgame content, the game features unlockable difficulty tiers and a variety of engaging activities, including Nightmare Dungeons, Helltides, Whispers of the Dead, and PvP-enabled zone called Fields of Hatred. Lastly, let's not forget the in-game shop and microtransactions. Diablo 4 follows a seasonal content model, with three month-long seasons accompanied by free and paid battle passes. These passes exclusively provide cosmetic rewards, ensuring a level playing field for all players. The in-game store will also only offer cosmetic items for purchase, allowing everyone to enjoy the game without pay-to-win mechanics. At least that's what we've been promised. There are even more features and quality of life changes that you can check out when Diablo 4 is released on June 6th for PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One, and Series X and S. Harmony The Fall of Reverie is a choice-driven narrative adventure game by Don't Nod, known for Life is Strange and Tell Me Why. In this game, players take on the role of Polly, who embarks on a journey to her hometown in search of her missing mother. However, Polly's quest takes an unexpected twist when she stumbles upon a mystical necklace that transports her to Reverie, a realm inhabited by godlike beings known as Aspirations. Within Reverie, Polly discovers that she has now become the Aspiration called Harmony. Following in her mother's footsteps and endowed with the gift of clairvoyance, she must restore balance to Reverie and prevent the downfall of both the Aspirations and humanity. The game places a strong emphasis on the consequences of choices, as each decision made not only impacts the separate worlds of Earth and Reverie, but also affects the strength and influence of the various aspirations. Players have the ability to catch glimpses of potential timelines and outcomes, enabling them to plan ahead and consider the long-term implications of their choices. The game boasts vivid and vibrant visuals, presenting a dystopian world with a Mediterranean-inspired setting and a diverse cast of characters who are brought to life through animated sequences and voice acting. Harmony The Fall of Reverie releases on June 8th for PC and Switch, followed by PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S versions on June 22nd. Undead Citadel by Dark Curry is an action-packed medieval zombie game developed exclusively for VR. The game, which relies on motion controls for engaging combat, can be played seated or standing, and players can choose between smooth locomotion with instant or smooth turning. You will play as a mercenary who discovers a massive citadel in the middle of a storm. In your desperate search for salvation, you must overcome hordes of monsters lurking in the shadows of the once densely populated citadel, armed only with a sword and other weapons and consumables found along the way. The game's main selling point is its innovative 100% physics-based combat engine, which prioritizes unobtrusive interaction with objects and characters. You will face a wide range of opponents, find over 60 different types of weapons, and use magic potions, skills, and powerful superpowers. 
Along with Horde mode, in which you'll try to survive endless armies of foes and climb leaderboards, there will be a full-sized campaign with over 10 levels to explore, including both exterior and interior environments. You'll have to battle hordes of the undead and figure out a variety of puzzles as you make your way through a massive post-apocalyptic fantasy world. Undead Citadel will be released for Steam VR on June 8th and will be available later for Oculus Quest 2 and PlayStation VR 2. Greyhill Incident is a survival horror game by Refugium Games that offers players an intense experience of an alien invasion in a small American neighborhood. The game delves into a conspiracy where the residents are distrustful of government officials and hesitant to call for help due to paranormal incidents. Set in the early 90s in the fictional town of Greyhill, players step into the shoes of Ryan Baker, an ordinary guy armed with a baseball bat and a revolver. The neighborhood is under attack by UFOs and gray aliens, and Baker must rescue one of his neighbors amidst the chaos. With a first-person perspective, players will solve puzzles, explore the neighborhood, and gather resources while encountering the aliens lurking around every corner. Greyhill Incident appears to have a satirical approach to the alien invasion theme, blending atmospheric horror elements with engaging gameplay. It draws inspiration from popular shows like The X-Files, movies like Fire in the Sky and Signs, various books and real-life events. Greyhill Incident is launching on June 9th for PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, and Xbox Series X and S. Layers of Fear is a psychological horror adventure game developed in Unreal Engine 5 by Bloober Team and Anshar Studios. Unlike a mere remake or reboot, it serves as a complete reimagining of the entire series. The game incorporates remakes of the existing games, introduces a new chapter, and presents a fresh framing narrative. A new addition to the series called The Last Note is a chapter in which players revisit familiar scenes from the perspective of the wife. Contrary to the original, combat options are available, altering the player's experience and potentially leading to different endings. The creative director assures that the game's difficulty adapts to the player's performance. Another notable difference between the original games and this version is the inclusion of visible hands for the protagonist. This departure from the previous disembodied experience enhances player immersion by enabling them to interact directly with the environment. The addition of voiceover lines for inner monologues and a lantern mechanic further enhances the gameplay. The lantern serves as both a tool and a weapon, enabling players to stun the antagonist when she gets too close. The game marks the end of an era for Bloober Team and is considered the crowning work of the Layers of Fear series, paying well-deserved homage to its legacy. A demo is available on Steam until May 22nd, offering a sneak peek into the unsettling world of the game. You can play through a section of the writer, the game's third and final protagonist, and explore her story and how it connects to previous installments. Park Beyond from Limbic Entertainment is a theme park management sim coming on June 16th. The main focus of the game is on creating and customizing roller coasters, attractions, and various other elements of the park to attract visitors and keep them entertained. Players have access to a highly advanced roller coaster creator, which allows them to design unique and thrilling rides. The addition of hooks for each coaster adds a personalized touch, suggesting goals and demographics that the coaster can cater to. This feature helps players tailor their rides to specific audiences, such as families or thrill seekers. The game also introduces planning options, allowing players to map out their coasters and make adjustments before committing any resources. This feature saves time and prevents wasted resources on incomplete or unsuccessful creations. Park Beyond incorporates pitch meetings where players receive guidance and specific targets for their theme park. Different parks offer various themes and target demographics, adding an element of strategy. Players must cater to the preferences and expectations of their chosen audience to create a successful and profitable park. One of the unique aspects of Park Beyond is the impossification mechanic, which allows players to defy the laws of physics and create imaginative and unconventional roller coasters. It extends beyond rides to upgrading staff and shops, resulting in a fun and chaotic gameplay experience. Park Beyond is coming to Windows PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S. Aliens Dark Descent is an intense real-time strategy game that puts a fresh spin on the terrifying Aliens franchise. Unlike previous games, this one focuses more on strategy and tactics, offering a different experience from traditional stealth, shooter, or puzzle-based games. You assume the role of a lead commander responsible for a squad of marines as you face relentless and lethal xenomorphs determined to kill you off one by one. The aesthetics, from the sound effects to the movements of the xenomorphs and the spattering of acidic blood, are meticulously designed to replicate the movie experience. The game creates a tense and oppressive atmosphere with elements like the fog of war, dark shadows, dead-end traps, and constant attacks from deadly creatures. Adding to the intensity is the fact that death in the game is permanent, instilling a sense of urgency and fear in every decision you make. 
set on planet Lethe, which is suffering from a terrifying xenomorph outbreak, it's up to you and your squad to stop it before it's too late. The game stays true to the franchise's nature of scaring players, immersing you in the atmosphere of the original movies. It is crucial to manage your squad's stress levels to avoid adverse consequences such as decreased accuracy or a refusal to carry out missions. The gameplay draws inspiration from XCOM, incorporating tactical elements and real-time action. Battles in Aliens Dark Descent are chaotic and intense with high stakes. The game provides a wide range of options for defense and attack, from setting up defenses and choke points to using grenades and flamethrowers. While you can pause the game to issue commands and slow down time to strategize, the speed and agility of the Xenomorphs make every encounter dangerous, even in slow motion. Despite its high difficulty level, the satisfaction of successfully managing a fight or learning from defeat is rewarding. The game will launch on June 20th for PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One, and Series X and S. If it wasn't obvious by now, Final Fantasy XVI has risen tremendously in popularity in recent months, easily becoming one of the most anticipated upcoming games of this year. Set in Velisthea, a world adorned with towering crystal mountains called Mother Crystals, the peaceful and prosperous life is disrupted by the spreading blight. In this world, powerful beings called Icons dwell within individuals known as Dominants, whose treatment and role differ across nations, ranging from esteemed figures to weapons of war. Throughout the main story, we'll be following Clive Rosfield across three periods of his life, with flashbacks providing insights into his past. Other key characters include Joshua, Clive's younger brother, who unexpectedly inherits powers, and Jill, a trusted figure connected to both brothers. Along his journey, Clive will meet additional companions who will join the party and be controlled by AI. Final Fantasy XVI introduces real-time action combat instead of the traditional turn-based system. The combat incorporates timely accessories, which are interchangeable rings providing various battle support. These accessories offer features like time manipulation for dodging attacks, automatic healing at low health, and the ability to execute complex attack combinations with a single input. Players will face various enemies including both smaller foes and massive icons, the powerful titans who are essentially summons from previous Final Fantasy games. There are instances where players can actually become an icon themselves. Clive can use their iconic abilities in combat, such as Phoenix, Garuda, and Titan, each with their own set abilities and cooldowns. These icon fights will offer a unique experience corresponding to the summon being faced. Final Fantasy XVI releases on June 22nd as a six-month exclusive for PlayStation 5, with a PC release scheduled for a later date. As you can see, June is an awesome month for all gamers, not only because there is something for everyone among these 12 promising titles we've highlighted, but also because there's a ton of new information coming our way from major gaming shows. Even though E3 isn't happening this year, we've got plenty of individual showcases and directs to keep us hyped. We'll get updates on games that were announced way before the pandemic and have been in the works for a while. And on top of that, expect many cool announcements about brand new games that we haven't even heard anything about yet. You can find all the links to the must-see shows and where to watch them in the video description. So without wasting any more time, let's check out the schedule for all the gaming shows happening in June this year. So those were our top picks for this month. If you found the video helpful, we'd love to hear from you. Hit the like button, subscribe if it's your first time here, and leave a comment to let us know what kind of games you like best. If we missed any titles or there's some game you're looking forward to, please share that too. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you up in the next one.